Okay, jumping jacks. Start with our feet together, arms at our side. When we begin, we jump apart. That's our feet apart, arms over our head. Then we jump together. Feet together, arms at our side. Apart. Together. Apart. Together. Good. Let's try two jumping jacks together. One, two, ready, go. One, two. Awesome. Let's do that again. Two more jumping jacks. One, two, ready, go. One, two. Awesome. I think we're ready for five. Let's try five jumping jacks. Let's stay together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, that was great. Good job. The next exercise I'd like to do with you is an exercise to strengthen our abdominal muscles. We call them sit-ups, otherwise known as curl-ups. So a few key things I'd like you to really try to work on and perfect as best as possible. So we won't be putting our hands behind our head. We are actually going to cross them in front of our chest, touching the opposite shoulder. It's also important that when we do our curl-ups that we keep our knees bent and keep them together. We don't want straight legs. Okay, we want to keep them bent. Okay, something else, when we are laying back on the floor and trying to sit up, I don't want you to lean to your side and use your elbow. If you do that, you're not really using those abdominal muscles. So I'm going to turn myself sideways so that you can see me. I have my hands across my chest, touching opposite shoulders. I'm going to lay flat on the ground. All right, I'm gonna move up a little so you can see me. My knees are bent, I don't know if you can tell. Okay, what I'm going to do is tighten those muscles, those ab muscles, and sit up to an almost complete sitting position. So I come up and I go back down. That would be one, okay? So get yourself into position. Okay, somewhere comfortable, flat on the ground, arms across your chest, touching those shoulders. And let's try one together. Ready, and up, and back. Up, and back. When you are sitting back, also remember, don't go back too fast. We don't want to bang our head on the floor either. Okay, so I want you to try to do five curl-ups. We can try to do these together. Ready, and up, one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up, five. Good job. Let's do some hopping. Remember the difference between hopping and jumping is that when we're hopping, we are leaving and landing on the same foot. With jumping, we keep our two feet together when we leave and land on the floor, but we're gonna be hopping. So I get my balance. When I hop, I'm gonna make sure that I use those muscles to get my body high enough off the floor so that light and air are between the bottom of my foot and the floor. Okay, so I have to really work on those muscles. So I'm gonna get my balance, lift my foot that I'm not hopping on, and get ready to start. Let's try three hops. And one, two, three. Good, let's switch, other foot, and one, two, three. Good, let's go back to the first one. Let's try five hops. Ready, begin. One, two, three. Four, five, and now I switch to my other foot, and one, two, three, four, five. Great job. This exercise is called shoulder taps or shoulder touches. It's an exercise that will help improve our upper body strength. So basically what we're going to do is get ourselves into push-up position. Now, if holding yourself in push-up position is a challenge, where your toes are on the floor and your hands are on the floor, you could also modify 
and use your knees and your hands instead of your toes and your hands, okay? No matter which position you choose, it's important that we don't push our bottom up into the air and we don't sag down to the middle because then we're really not getting the most benefit from this exercise, okay? So I'm gonna do the modified version just so that you can see how this looks and then I'll show you the regular version. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going to alternate touching the shoulder with my opposite hand. So if I start with my right hand, I'll touch my left shoulder. If I start with my left hand, I'll touch my right shoulder. And it looks like this. So it's tap, 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 tap. Okay? Now if I had my toes on the floor, it would look like this. Tap, 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 tap. Okay? So now I want you to figure out which position is most comfortable for you. Knees and hands or toes and hands. That's the first part. Okay? And then give it a try. All right? Let's do two taps together. One, two, ready, go. Tap, tap. Good. Let's try the modified. Tap, tap. Okay? See how many taps you can do without getting into that incorrect position. It's a challenge. Great job. You guys did a great job with those exercises. Now let's take those exercises and turn it into a fun game. So if you think back to some of our PE classes in the WCB gym, we did something called the pin spin, where we had a hula hoop, bowling pin, and cones. And you guys took turns spinning the pin to find out which cone it pointed to. And then depending on which cone it pointed to, you knew what exercise to do. Well, I have to be honest, I don't have a bowling pin here at my house, and I'm sort of thinking you guys probably don't either. So what I did is I looked around my house and I found some objects that we can use to do a very similar activity, and I call it the spoon spin. So let me show you what I came up with. Even if you don't have a spoon that works really well, I actually found some other items that work equally or better than a spoon. So here on my table is my wooden spoon that will work. I have to say when you do this, it is important that you have a flat surface, otherwise whatever it is you're spinning really won't spin that well. I found that my water bottle also spins really well, okay, as long as you have permission, that's always important from your parents. Okay, let me show you the spoon, I didn't even show you the spoon. Okay, the spoon spins pretty well, okay, and you can even use a water bottle, spins pretty great. In addition to your spoon or your water bottle or whatever it is that you are spinning, you are going to need four items. They can be stuffed animals, they could be toys. Just about anything, as long as they are four different items. Okay. So I have over here a green teddy bear. You'll also notice that on a piece of paper, I wrote the name of the exercises because I know for me, it might be a little hard to remember. So I have jumping jacks for my teddy bear. I have shoulder taps next to my turtle. I have hopping next to my moose and I have sit-ups next to Spider-Man. So just like in the pin spin, I'm gonna spin, in this case, the spoon, to see what animal it most closely points to. It might not point exactly at an animal or item, okay? And even if it's in between two items, you can either spin it again or just choose one of those two exercises, okay? So here we go, here's my first spin. And it's pointing to sit-ups. 
So that means I would do five sit-ups. Okay, if I was doing this with someone else, I could let the other friend or family member spin next, but right now it's only me, so I'm gonna spin again. Oh my goodness, sit-ups again. So I would do five sit-ups. I'm actually going to exchange my spoon and give my water bottle a try. Let me see how this goes. Okay, here we go. Give it a spin. Move that one around a few more times, and it is most closely pointing to shoulder taps. So that's what I would do next. So there you go, boys and girls, our home version of Pin Spin, using found items from around your house. I hope you have fun trying it out. Please keep in touch with Mr. Garvey and myself, Mrs. Inverso, and we hope you have a great weekend. All right, we miss you.